I'm uh, sort of familiar with your uh, experiment of uh, calling these bakeries and asking them to make uh, traditional marriage cakes. Yes. And uh, them refusing. Um, can you kind of uh, explain to me uh, your, your uh, reasoning behind that? I was so sick and tired of hearing about um, Christian couples or Christian uh, businesses and bakeries. For example, we had the story with Aaron and Melissa Klein. They were charged with $150,000. They had to pay by the state because the the uh, some some lesbians came over and wanted them to do a cake for their lesbian whatever ceremony whatever you want to call it and they were like hey this is against our christian faith this is you know this is disgusting we're not going to do it and then all of a sudden uh they get in trouble they get in trouble by the state they get punished for it and i'm thinking wait a second i woke up one morning and told myself let's shift the battle to them let's take it to them let's do the same thing to them because, because to ask a Christian, to ask any Christian, a true Christian, not a fake Christian, a true Christian to do a cake that accommodates or is done for the purpose of depravity is against the inner conviction of that Christian. And so when I went to these 13, uh, they were either openly homosexual bakeries or they were pro-homosexual bakeries, either or, I asked them, make me a cake that says gay marriage is wrong. I want that cake. Homosexual marriage is wrong. And every single one of them told me the same thing. Uh, that's against our belief. We can't support that. Blah, blah, blah. Well, wait a second now. When the Christian says, listen, I can't do it, all of a sudden it's a civil rights issue. All of a sudden, um, you know, you can't choose who you serve and all these nonsense arguments come over. But when, a, when you ask a pro-homosexual or, a pro, or a, an openly sodomite bakery and you ask them, give me a cake that supports my beliefs, they say, oh, that's against our beliefs. Well, I don't care about your beliefs. We, so my whole purpose, really, my main intention, ultimately, my main intention was to show other Christians, hey, you can take it to them. This is a, this is a cultural fight. This is a religious fight. And, this, and we, we got to fight. The, the, the scripture says, fight a good fight. St. Paul says, fight a good warfare. Be a good soldier. And so we have to take it to them. Yeah. And what was uh, your experience like? Uh, from, what, what was the response uh, from them other than declining to make this cake? Uh, did they uh, have comments for you? Did you get into a conversation with them? It, sometimes I did. And we, we got into these arguments. And there was the, if, you, if you watch the video, the first lady that she's part of some sodomite bakery up there in the... Uh, in, uh, in uh, the, the Bay Area, in your San Francisco area, I forgot that there's like there's like a whole sodomite neighborhood there where they all live. Uh, Castro, yeah, Castro District, the so little Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, and I asked this lady, and they believe it or not, in this bakery they serve giant cookies in the shapes of human penises. I kid you not, human penis cookies. And I asked this lady, I said, I want a cake that says gay marriage is wrong. She started cussing at me. She started saying, yeah, I'll give you a cake and I'll put a big dick on it. I'll put a big phallus on it. It was insulting me. And then eventually she hung up the phone on my face. And then there was one guy I was, who was a homosexual baker. I believe in Massachusetts, or if I remember correctly. And I asked him to do the same thing. And he told me to get an effing life. That's exact words to me. Hung up the phone on my face. Number of other bakeries. Hung up the phone on my face. I called up one uh, bakery in the Bay Area and it, this is all recorded. It's all on video. So I'm not just making this up. And the guy said, the guy said, uh, we don't support that here. Blah, blah, blah. Hung up the phone on my face. Then there was a lady in Atlanta, openly homosexual bakery. I asked him the same thing. She said, we can't support that. I said, why not? She said, oh, because most of our employees are homosexual. And she hung up the phone on my face. Well, excuse me. Why should that dictate whether you serve me or not? I mean, it's all about service, right? And they want to sit there and talk about love and tolerance. They want toleration for their own depravity. They don't want toleration for, for anti-homosexual beliefs. They want toleration only for homosexual beliefs. Well, what about anti-homosexual beliefs? So uh, my understanding is that this was mostly kind of to prove a point. Or did you actually want the cake to be made? Oh, we had a we had a uh, an event that we were going to do for Shubat.com in support of marriage. We ended up having to make our own cake, uh, but I but I was like, you know what? I'm going to get these homos to do a cake. I'm going to get them to do a cake for us because in Ireland, if you looked in the news, in Ireland there was a homosexual organization that went to a Christian bakery in Dublin 
And they said, we want a cake that says support homosexual marriage. Guy said, I can't do that. Now they're using the state against them. So the homosexual agenda is an imperialistic agenda. It's not just in America. It's at an international scale. Kenya, the government of Kenya, uh, I believe it was Uganda. Yeah, Uganda said, listen, we're going to do a, a law against homosexuality. Boom, Obama goes to the country, tells them if you don't do it, we're not going to fund your nation anymore. They were exploiting them. They were trying to control them. Russia makes laws against homosexual propaganda, as they say in their accent. All of a sudden, everyone starts pressuring them that they have to stop. United Nations, Human Rights Watch, they're trying to pressure them. Why? Because it's at an international scale. They want these types of laws to be at an international level. So it's not just in America. But I saw what happened in Ireland, and I'm like, they want a Christian bakery to make a cake that says, support gay marriage. Guy says no. Homosexual activist, sodomite activist says, oh, you can't choose who you serve. Okay, fine. If you want people to make cakes that are pro-homosexual, I want you guys to make cakes that are anti-homosexual. How about that? They don't want to do it because it's against their beliefs. Well, what about my beliefs? Yeah. Well, I'm curious to hear uh, your opinion on this. Like, with things changing so much right now uh, in America with the approach to homosexuality, like the Supreme Court's going to rule on it this summer with gay marriage, with everything uh, going through so many changes, do you feel that uh, traditional Christian uh, uh, marriage is under attack or just Christians in general are under attack? The, let me tell you uh, something. Legally or culturally? Let me tell you something. In the Christian faith, Marriage is a holy sacrament established by God himself. So when they are going against, they're saying that this is marriage. This is not marriage. This is two men sodomizing each other, calling it marriage. This is masturbatory friction. This is not sex. It's nothing to do with marriage. There is no such thing as homosexual marriage. It is an illusion that they've made up in their heads. It is an illusion they want to program the society to all of a sudden accept. There is no such thing. The homosexual has no right to be married because he has no right to something that does not exist. Bottom line. You know, now, is there an attack on marriage? Absolutely. There is an attack on the sacrament. An attack on marriage is an attack on God. The symbol of the rainbow is in the scriptures. It is, the sim it is a symbol of God's covenant that he redeemed the world and he will no longer destroy humankind with a flood. If you read the Talmud, if you read some ancient Jewish writings, they tell us in Jewish tradition that the sin that eventually broke the camel's back to make God flood the earth was homosexuality, cannibalism, human sacrifice. And basically what these sodomites are doing by stealing the rainbow is saying, hey, we're still here, God, and your little covenant doesn't mean anything to us. That's what they're saying. They are mocking a biblical uh, image a biblical symbol, and ultimately they're attacking Christianity. This is why you have all the sodomite activists, anti-Christian. What do they all have in common? Anti-Christian. You're doing this in defense of God. I mean, it sounds somewhat, uh, I hope you wouldn't take offense by this, but it sounds somewhat similar to a jihad. You know, this is, you know, if I had a dollar for every time someone has told me this, I'd have enough money to buy a small meal at Applebee's, or a big meal at Applebee's, I should say. Listen, this is the difference between me and a Muslim. A Muslim fights for Islam. A Christian fights for Christianity. We both fight for our faith. Homosexuals fight for their beliefs. They go in rallies. They go in protests. They want to change the laws. So we as Christians go out and fight for our faith. Fight to establish the truth over wickedness, over evil. In the scriptures, be it in Genesis 19, Judges 19, Leviticus 18, uh, or in Leviticus chapter 20, Romans 13, or if you go to Romans chapter 1, 1 Peter 2, 14, they all have one thing in common, that evil must be extirpated from the society. Your name is Hosiah, am I correct? Your name is Hosiah? Uh, yeah, Josiah. Oh, okay, well, we say Hosiah, Josiah. That is a biblical name. Yeah. King Hosiah, in the, in the book, in the second book of Kings, chapter 23, King Hosiah destroys the houses of the homosexuals. So every time you write your name down or you tell someone your name, think about that right there. It is a biblical name. Why do we have biblical names? Because we have Christian ethics. Traditionally, we have Christian ethics in society. 
Homosexuality used to be outlawed in this country. Now, all of a sudden, it is, it is accepted. Why? They want to purge the entire society of Christian ethics. It's not just homosexuality, abortion, easy divorce. All of these things is an attack on Christian ethics, attack on human life itself. Um, so you're not so much concerned with the legal aspect of this when it comes to the lawsuits for suing for religious discrimination. Um, you're more doing this in defense of Scripture. Ultimately, is it, ultimately it is defense of the Christian faith. Laws. Ultimately, it is defense of the Christian faith. But defending the Christian faith is defending true liberty. See, liberty, you people think that liberty is the freedom to sodomize another man. That is not liberty. That is bondage. Be, being a male stripper in a cage somewhere in a nightclub, that is like an animal. You're, you're like an animal. You know, you're strip, strip, stripping for other men all the time. Sodom, being sodomized by other men. Killing your own children unborn. This is bondage. This is the hatred for human life. Sex is made for procreation. That is the ultimate function of, of sex. For procreation. A woman gets pregnant. Why? Because it brings human life. Uh, 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 discharging your semen into another man's anus or another man's mouth or body or whatever, that is anti-life. That brings no life. If everybody was homosexual, the world would not procreate. You would have to, be a, you would have to get a bunch of turkey basters to make babies. It is an anti-life. Abortion is anti-life. I'm aware of this argument. It's just, uh, you know, I think the counter-argument would be that from a legal standpoint, if you're not harming another person you know, that it's not really the jurisdiction of the law to tell people what to do with their own bodies. This um, is the typical, this yeah. is the typical argument. This is the John, this is the John Milton, John Mill, whatever his name was, argument. You know, he, oh, if it doesn't hurt anybody, it doesn't really matter. Well, guess what? It eventually always is going to go against another human being. Oh, so it's consensual. Okay, big deal. What if I have a, a 10 year old who wants to have sex with an adult male? It's consensual. No one's being forced. No one's being hurt. So what's the big deal? If another man, if another man wants to masturbate a 15-year-old boy, 17-year-old boy, who cares? Okay, I'll give you another example. Polygamy. What if I'm a Muslim and I want to go to a bakery and I say, I want a cake that celebrates my marriage with five women. And the guy says, no, we don't support polygamy, sir. Well, all of a sudden, you're going to have discrimination. Love has no limits. Isn't that what you sodomites always say? Love has no limits. So what if someone's bisexual? He likes men and women. The ultimate expression of his love would be to marry a man and a woman, right? To, to ultimately express the, the fullest love of bisexuality. I want to marry a man and a woman at the same time. Well, we can't do that, sir. That's polygamy. That's against the law. Oh, discrimination. Take polygamy off the books. So what if a dog wants to, uh, let's say, dry hump another man? He's not hurting the dog. The dog's enjoying himself. Why can't that be allowed? Hey, I want to marry my dog as long as I'm not sodomizing the other dog. That's okay too. What if two brothers want to sodomize each other? They're not hurting anybody. They should be married. Two brothers getting married. Homosexual incest. How far do we want to take it? There needs to be a limit. There used to be something called Christian ethics. There used to be something called standards. You guys want to destroy society standards i i mean don't assume you know who i am or what my beliefs are well I, you're from vice magazine so the with a name like vice i can only assume the worst okay uh well thank you so much for your time theodore i really appreciate you talking right, are you homosexual uh no i'm not okay why not why am i not a homosexual yeah why aren't you have you ever experimented uh, I'm not about to tell you my sexual... Well, I mean, how, how can you be so... Why? Nothing wrong with it, right? Nothing wrong with me. Come on, man. Nothing wrong with homosexuality. I mean, hey, I mean, how can you be so close-minded? You should at least experiment with it. ...given the context of this interview. I mean, hey, listen, you've never... Tr well, why not, though? The reason why you're not homosexual is because you know it's disgusting. You know it's disgusting. You know it's disgusting. That's why you never, you're not a homosexual. You, you go with women because you know that's, that's what's good. You know, oh, good. You know, breast, ass, nice waist, oh, beautiful body. That's the natural way. You're, the reason why you're not homosexual is because you know it's not normal. Or else you would be doing it.
Your party has disconnected. Goodbye. He's gone. <laughs>